Welcome back to series on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do one more example of the alternating series test, and we'll see one here, as you can see up here, that may not at first look seem like an alternating series test, all right? Um, but let's just plug in a few terms and see what happens. So we have the series from n equals 1 to infinity of cosine of n pi over the square root of n. Well, if we just think about the denominator and get some partial terms here, so the denominator is just going to be square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, square root of 4, which is 2, square root of 5, and so on and so forth. So if it's alternating, the top, the numerator, is what has to be the alternating part. So we have a trig function here. Let's just plug in 1. Cosine of 1 pi, or it's just cosine of pi, if you think about it, that's on the unit circle at 180 degrees, and the cosine at that point is negative 1. All right, let's go to n equals 2. So cosine of 2 pi, that's back at 0. In fact, this is the same thing as cosine of 0. Same thing as cosine of 2 pi, that's 1. If you plug in n equals 3, cosine of 3 pi is the same as cosine of pi, which is negative 1. And so what you're going to see is that the numerator is just going to go between negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1 forever. So this is, in fact, an alternating series. Now, one important thing to remember about this uh, trig function, which is cosine, is that the value of any cosine, it doesn't matter what's in here. You could have a cosine of a million squared over 350 pi or whatever, okay? Cosine, I don't care what's in the parentheses, cosine can only be between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so when we take a limit, or if we look at this series, there's no way the cosine would make this blow up, because the cosine can only be between negative 1 and 1. Okay, this part will never make the series blow up. So we're going to have to look at the other part, which is the square root of n. So we need to know what our b sub n is in order to apply this test. All right, one thing that's important to realize about this is the fact that cosine no matter what's in the parentheses here, I don't care if it's cosine of a million pi or whatever, it can only range between negative 1 and 1. Okay? It can only be between those values. So the cosine function would never make this series blow up. Okay, So it's only going to be dependent on the denominator. In any case, we need to know our b sub n to apply these criteria. So our b sub n is basically everything minus the alternating term. So we have to take out the cosine. And so the b sub n is just 1 over square root of n, all right? And the alternating series test tells us we need to take the limit as n goes to infinity for our b sub n and see if it equals 0. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over square root of n, that's obviously 0 because this is just 1 over infinity, which is 0. So our first criterion is satisfied. Now we would need to show that this b sub n is decreasing, all right? So is b sub n greater than b sub n plus 1, in other words. So is it true that 1 over square root of n, which is our b sub n, is greater than 1 over the square root of n plus 1, our b sub n plus 1? Well, this is true actually for every single n in this series, which starts at 1. If we plug in 1 here, 1 over 1 is greater than 1 over square root of 2. Right? 1 over square root of 2 is greater than 1 over square root of 3. That would be our n equals 2 term. N equals 3 term would be 1 over square root of 3 being greater than 1 over square root of 4. So for every single n included in this series, this b sub n is decreasing. Therefore, because both of these criteria are satisfied, we know that this series converges. But again, this does not tell us whether or not it's absolute convergence or conditional convergence. So what we need to do now is we need to take the absolute value of our original series and see whether or not that converges or diverges. The series from n equals 1 to infinity of the absolute value of cosine of n pi over the square root of n is the series from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over square root of n. All right. Um, remember that cosine can only range between negative 1 and 1, and since our specific ends that we're plugging in make this either negative 1 or 1, all of these are just going to be positive 1 for the absolute value. Okay, so it's just 1 over square root of n, which remember we can rewrite, which might make it easier here, as n equals 1 to infinity, series of 1 over n to the 1 half. Now this is actually good, because this is a p-series, right? Remember, we have some constant over n to a power. 
This is a p-series, and our p in this case is one-half. Now remember from the p-series test, when p is less than one, the series diverges. So because n is one-half, which is certainly less than one, this series, which is the absolute value of the alternating series, it diverges by a p-series test. And because this diverges, the original alternating series is conditionally convergent. All right. So again, remember that if the absolute value of the alternating series in the second part diverges, the original series is conditionally convergent. But in some cases, as we saw, if this actually converged, then it would be absolutely convergent. All right. So hopefully this gave you a little more grasp on the alternating series test. Um, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and in the next few videos we're going to do a different series test. Alright, thanks for watching.